Hi, I'm the Grow Boss. I write the Grow Book and Equipment Guide. And in this video, we're going to go over the rules for adding CO2 because there seems to be a lot of confusion about how and when you should be doing it. So the best place to start is with the number one question you guys ask me about CO2. And that's, do I really need an expensive controller like this awesome Sentinel? Which is actually a reasonable question because everything always seems so dramatic when it comes to growing weed. That's why in this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know to make an intelligent decision on the topic of adding CO2 and controllers like this one from Sentinel. But before we go on, you should know, this is one of several short videos in a series about setting up your garden. There is a long video that covers everything you need to know about venting and cooling and adding CO2. But there are also a bunch of shorter videos like this that cover the individual topics too. There is one more thing I want you to know before we get started. All the examples I use in this video are going to be intense. And that's because it's easier for me to explain the basics of venting when you can see what's happening in a controlled space. Of course, the rules for adding CO2 always stay the same regardless of tent size. Rule number one, soon as you turn the light on, you should always be adding CO2. Because in the photosynthesis equation, plants use light for energy to combine water and CO2. So unless you're going to overwater or move your light closer, the only thing left is CO2. Rule number two. If you are recirculating the air over and over, then it doesn't matter where in the tent you add the CO2 because it won't be vented. And rule number three, if you're venting, make sure to keep the CO2 on the opposite side of the tent. So the plants are between the CO2 source and the exhaust port. So they get their best chance at absorbing the CO2 as it passes through them, just like you see here with the smoke check that out and that's why i tell you all you have to do is get the co2 in there and the plants will take care of the rest okay let's go over that one more time in a vented garden like this where we're venting the tent we would add co2 down there as far away as possible from the vent but if we were to move the fan filter out of the tent well, now we've created a sealed garden and no longer will any air be removed from or added to the tent because now the fan filter is outside the tent. Just look at the smoke going through the other side of the ducting. But now that the garden is sealed, you're really going to have to commit to the project because you're going to need to control everything now, which means you're going to have to add CO2, cool the air and control the humidity which gets to be a bit much and expensive for a project of this size. Okay, there are a couple of manufacturers out there, but I like Sentinel best because these guys have been making controllers since people started growing weed indoors and their products never get returned. So if you're venting a garden like this, you can get by with a CO2 producer like this one from TNB or from a tank like this with a timer. You don't really need a Sentinel controller here. It's nice, but you don't really need one here. And if you do want to try to coordinate the fan filter with the CO2 release, Sentinel makes a controller for that too. And since at this level, you should definitely be adding CO2 because CO2 will get you 25% more weight. Can you imagine a better garden setup to add it to? After all, CO2 increases weight but an air conditioner only increases your electrical bill, which is why I love this setup so much. Because now that you're not venting and it's a sealed garden, the additional weight from the CO2 offsets the cost of the AC. Okay, if you don't wanna buy an expensive controller, and I can totally understand that even though I think you should, all you have to do is get a tab timer like this and set it for 15 minutes on and 15 minutes off while your light's on. Then just set the flow on your regulator to one half PSI per thousand during the first two weeks of flower. Set it to one PSI 
per thousand weeks three, four, and five. And then at the end, when your plants are at the biggest they're gonna get, set it to 1.5 PSI per thousand for those last three weeks. And while it won't be as accurate as a Sentinel controller, it'll definitely get you there. One more thing about using a Sentinel controller like this, if you're a builder guy, if you're venting, and you're trying to coordinate the CO2 release. So it happens when your fans are off and it turns off when your fans are off. Just stop. It's not worth the effort. That's why you have to understand all the details about venting. Because if you don't have a clear plan before you start buying shit and you have to buy stuff twice because you didn't understand what you were buying or how to use it or what you were trying to accomplish, then this project is going to get expensive in a hurry. Okay, I'm the Grow Boss. I write the Grow Book and Equipment Guide and the No More Grow More Fat Cards. And if you want to buy my books or my cards, you can get them at your local hydro store, eBay, Amazon, or my website, thegrowboss.com. And if you still have questions and you still want help, you can call my hotline. It's $49 an hour. You can sign up for it on my website. We'll exchange pictures. I'll help you get your garden where it should be. All right, if you like the video, don't forget to click the like button, share it with a friend, leave a comment, and buy my books. Thanks for watching.